Hi guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the top things that severely can affect your detoxification ability. We're also gonna tie in a little bit about genetics and how that plays a major role. First, let's take a look at what is that detoxification. Detoxification is a process in the body where it actually eliminates toxins, and also metabolic byproducts, process that occur in every single cell of the body that actually has to be disposed of. So we're gonna be talking a little bit more about that. Detoxification is important and the reason is because it's going to eliminate these toxins from the body. And if they stay in the body, it can actually cause a lot of different health problems. The reason this can be health problems is because these toxins can actually affect all the different cells in the body and how they function. Toxins are the primary causes of chronic diseases in our country. According to the Pesticides Information Cooperative, they found that just either acute or even chronic exposure to chemicals radically affects how well the cells will work. It affects the speed on how these key functions of the cells actually work. So it can actually cause problems with the heart rate. It can cause problems with neural connections. It can cause problems with uh, diabetic um, uh, receptors of the cells. It can also affect uh, the, the gut and the immune system as well. Any toxic exposures can alter the function of the cells. And when it affects the function of the cells, it'll start affecting the actual function of the organ itself, and then ultimately the whole unit together. This all depends on the amount of toxins a person is exposed to, and also the person's genetic weaknesses that they may have in the, their detox abilities. Take, for example, BPA, bisphenol A, which is all over the, the United States, it's all over America, it's plastics. Plastic, we drink out of plastic bottles, we drink, we actually cook food in plastic containers in the microwave. We're exposed to plastics all the time. According to this study that they actually did, they found that you can only have five micrograms per liter in your urine to be able to make sure things are not happening in a bad way. Well, if you take the amount we're getting in our bodies, most people are well over that limit. Now, what's interesting is this, BPA above five micrograms per liter will double your chance of having diabetes. If you eat a can of soup every day of the week, you'll actually have five times that level in your body. If you have just two cans of can soup a week, you will double your chance of having diabetes. The liver is the primary organ that is responsible for detoxification in the body. It has a complex system of enzymes and pathways that actually inert type products. So it can be eliminated through the feces, urine, or through the breath, or even the skin. We can break down this process of detoxification into four different phases. Phase one, phase two, that happen in the liver. Phase three, that is actually part of the liver. And then phase four, which is actually in the actual intestine itself. Phase one has to do with the cytochrome P450 enzymes. Very complex area that actually has to work properly. The thing is, is that your genes have an effect on how well those detoxins actually could go through that phase one. Let's look at it as this way. We have a pesticide that's going into phase one and it goes through phase one and it becomes an active or reactive intermediary that's very, very toxic to the body. Then it goes through phase two where it actually gets connected to some other substance that actually makes it completely inert. And then it goes through out the liver, through bile and then into the intestines. If we look at the phase one and phase two, if you have phase one working too fast and you have phase two going too slow, that can be a major problem. And genetics have a major impact on that. So if we look at phase one, let's just use it as an example. Phase one is a, a faucet in your, your, uh, in your sink. You have it on turned on really high, but the drain in that sink is slow. It's a little sluggish. Well, eventually those that water is going to accumulate. And those are those intermediaries that are very, very toxic. It's really good if you have a good phase one, especially if a person has an estrogen problem because estrogen hormone actually helps facilitate the growth of different cells, which actually can facilitate and is uh, implicated in cancer, breast cancer. But we want to be able to make sure phase two is working better than phase one. Because if you have that faucet turned on full blast and that drain is working slow, you're in trouble because all those intermediaries are going to be deposited in your fat, in your bones, in the tissues, so it's going to cause major inflammation in your body, which is the leading cause of most chronic diseases. So those genes are very, very important. And in many patients that I have that have chronic diseases, guess what? They have a 
fast phase one and a slow phase two that causes major problems in neuroinflammation, which can lead to problems in the brain or anywhere else in the body. Like I said, 14 out of the 15 chronic diseases are related to inflammation. So that just knowing that alone is very important. A lot of times the things you're gonna do to speed up phase two also speeds up phase one. So you need to be able to be careful to balance those out. You always wanna have phase one to be slower than phase two. Then when we get into phase three, if you have a sluggish liver that has problems getting bile out, like say vegetarians that don't eat much fat, if you have a problem with getting bile produced or a, or a liver that's clogged, it's not getting that bile, which is full of toxins, it, that pours into the intestines. So you want to have make sure that's working properly. Bile salts may be a very helpful method to be able to do that. The other thing, we want to make sure the bowels are working properly. If a person has a bowel problem, say that they have constipation and they're having this stasis inside the, the gut, you're getting reabsorption of all those types of toxins, even though they may be inert. Sometimes people have a leaky gut or a problem with dysbiosis of the gut, uh, the bacteria in the gut, meaning they're there are wrong concentrations and certain bacteria will produce enzymes that actually will take those conjugated substances and separate them to make them those reactive activated uh, intermediaries again, which are very toxic and they get reabsorbed into the body. Terrible because it creates a whole inflammatory response right out of the get-go. So that's really important. That can also, those leaky guts, can, this can cause autoimmune problems, also inflammatory problems and a host of other health issues. So it's very important to balance out phase one and phase two the best as possible. Phase one, exercise, drinking water, eliminating or preventing toxins from getting in your body is even more critical. If you're standing there filling up your gas tank and you're smelling those fumes, you're getting toxins in your body. So you want to be able to eliminate it as much as possible. Stay more organic. Get away from those pesticides, from the GMO products that are full of the glyphosates. So you want to be able to eliminate those as much as possible. That alone will prevent the number or amount of those reactive intermediaries going into phase two. Phase two, you may need to increase on uh, N-acetylcysteine. You may be, want to be eating a lot of Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, all those different green vegetables that actually allow you to have better function of the phase two. You're going to want to make sure that you're actually getting, like I said, exercise and water. Fiber is very important as well. So those are some of the tips that really are important for your detoxification. Most people do not look into their own genetics to see. Some people are afraid. We do a very specific test, a DNA health test that is isolated to very specific parts of your health profile that allows us to see, do you have problems with genes that are related to inflammation? Do you have problems with detoxification, phase one, phase two? Do you have a problem with other areas of the body that have an influence on inflammation in the body and also detoxification? A lot of times it's very important to know what those things are. And we do tests specifically to find out if a person has leaky gut or has biosis of the bowel, also the genetics as well. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video today. If you have any questions or if you want a little more information, you can always click the link below. Take care. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.